Hello and welcome to today's webinar, which will introduce you not only to Freestyle Solutions Multi-Channel Order Manager, but our integration with barcoders to help supercharge your warehouse efficiency. Just a few housekeeping things just to let you guys know what's going on during today's webinar. First and foremost, we are recording this, so whatever the case may be, you want to share this with somebody else in your organization, you want to share this with a friend or family member, whatever the case, we'd be happy and we're here recording this. Recordings are usually sent out about 24 hours after the webinar has ended. Questions are welcome. Please make sure you can ask us any questions at any time in regards to the barcoders integration, in regards to mom and stuff, whatever questions you may have. You can simply just go ahead here on your GoToWebinar console and just type in a question and we'll be happy to answer it for you. Also to let you know, we do have the handouts available regarding the barcoder solution as well as information about mom as in general. So all the handouts that you need will be available for you to download and share with your own leisure. So who's taking you on this journey today? First off, my name is Sean Taggart. I am the product marketing manager. I've been with Freestyle Solutions for roughly about four years. And I'm going to hand it over to our director of product management, Ian. Thanks, Sean. My name is Ian Awano, product management of Freestyle Solutions. Been with the company about 12 years. Uh, led teams from support through implementation. I'm currently running the product side to help develop new features and integrations with the mob's product suite. And on the barcoder side, we have Gordon Jennings. Gordon, why don't you say hello to everyone? Hi, um, Gordon Jennings. I'm the president of Barcoders, uh, Advanced Barcode System. We founded the company about 18 years ago. Uh, still here and, and uh, happy to be here. Thanks, Gordon. So today what we're going to do is we're going to give you quick introductions about the company and about MOM, and then really go into the integration with Barcoders and MOM 10. So about Freestyle Solutions. Freestyle Solutions was formerly known as Dynacomp. It was started by retailers for retailers. Two brothers started this company roughly about 30 years ago. They wanted a way to go ahead and manage their inventory and orders for um, the catalogers. So here's some of our customers uh, that we have here through various different um, organizations. So today we're going to be talking about mom and barcoders. So today's agenda, like I said, we're going to give you a brief introduction to mom give you an overview of the barcoder system. Gordon's going to go ahead and take care of the demonstration for barcoders themselves, and then we'll answer any questions you may have about both uh, systems. Let's say hello to mom. Freestyle Mom is a flagship on-premise and hosted solution, specializes in managing orders, customers, and inventory across all e-commerce channels, and our largest feature set in order management for over 30 years of experience. So it has a broad range of direct integrations plus a robust API. Here's a short video to give you a little bit more of an idea. Your online business is growing. That's a good thing. But its orders increase. So it's a bottleneck to business processes. To keep growing, you need to do a better job of managing inventory, processing and fulfilling orders, and keeping customers happy, all while expanding into new channels. That's where mom comes in. Whether you rely on Magento, SiteLink, or another e-commerce platform, you take orders by phone or over the counter. Sell through online marketplace or use a mix of all of the above. Mom has helped thousands of businesses streamline and automate operations. From shopping to shipping, Mom manages the critical aspects of your business, including essential integrations with carriers, payment processing, and accounting systems. So you can be sure that inventory is always accurate. Orders ship simply and your customer service team can respond with confidence. And with Mom handling all the complicated details, you'll be free to focus on sourcing new products, finding new customers, and ultimately growing your business. So how are we going to do that? How does Mom handle that for you. We consider Mom the central repository for everything. So everything coming from your shopping cart or marketplaces, everything coming from either a file import through our APIs, through our car core feature set, and also some of the other features that we have here to handle your shipping, financial, any type of reporting, security with our PCI compliance, as well as warehousing. Ian, do you want to add anything more to this? Oh, that's pretty much it. But today we're going to be really focusing on the warehousing side and how we can make that more efficient and optimized. So, and Gordon's going to be helping out with that. So let's introduce barcoders really quick. So 
So the barcoders uh, solution can help you save $38 on average in shipping costs due to picking errors. We'll increase your picking by 25% and reduce labor by 50% by giving you better warehouse organization and also give you the ability to print and create labels and also print product labels for easy view and scan. Obviously, what that will also do is give you improved satisfaction with accurate picking, making sure that your customer gets the right items, and also helps with making sure that the items are identified before they go out. Also, at the same time, it will help with your accuracy of inventory across all your sellable channels. I'm going to pass it over to Gordon, who's going to explain this diagram now. Gordon? Thank you, Sean. As, uh, as Sean and Ian mentioned, uh, MOM is a premise-based uh, solution. They also have a, a web, a web hosted, if you, a cloud hosted if you need that. Typically there's an a on-site SQL server running on a SQL uh, machine as you see here on the left uh, in the server room. And in your office you have workstations that are running a client that access the, the, the uh, SQL database. And uh, they're tied in through, through the, the Ethernet, the, your network. What we do is we supply what's called the RF server that would also go in your server room. And the, the RF server provides several services. One, it runs an instance of uh, IIS, so that you can, a web browser, so that you can manage the settings in our system and, and glean some reports and also uh, see any move ads or change that's made in your warehouse. It also is a tool that allows you to print barcodes. Uh, there's a, an application that comes loaded on it allowing you to attach a printer to it and print barcodes for uh, incoming items or for your, your shelf locations. The, it also acts as the intermediary between the, the scanners, the wireless scanners over on the right that you see, and the SQL server. So uh, the scanner will make a call to the RF server and then it, gets, it, it goes back and, and moves on doing its other thing while the RF server speaks to the SQL server and so on and so forth. Um, we would help pr provide the uh, infrastructure in your warehouse, so the access points that are pictured here, the number of access points you need are dependent on how big your warehouse is. The, the bigger the warehouse, obviously, the more uh, access points you need. The goal is to, is to saturate your warehouse floor with good radio frequency, or commonly called RF. Um, the access points are to the scanners as cell phone towers are to your cell phone. So if you drive out into, the, uh, into an area where there are no cell phone towers, obviously your cell phone won't work. Likewise, in the warehouse, if your uh, wireless scanner roams beyond the capability of an access point, it will, it will not work as well. So the goal is to get uh, as many access points as, as necessary, as needed, to cover the square footage of your warehouse. So there's, a, there's an upfront one-time cost for the hardware. Uh, it's, it's minimal uh, compared to other, other uh, you know, new equipment. We're, we're pretty sensitive in that regard. And then also uh, there's an ongoing uh, software that you would pay monthly that uh, you, you essentially rent. And the rental includes support and any upgrades or bug fixes that may come along. Back to you, Sean. Thanks, Gordon. So in today's uh, webinar, you're going to see the following features between barcoders and MOM10. You're going to be able to see the lookup functionality, how to look up the C by either skimming in or typing in the UPC or, or SKU itself. Uh, you're going to see the pick process of how to quickly pick and accurately pick a single order. Uh, starting from the closest to furthest location, verify that all the SKUs are in are present for an order prior to packing. Sign just allows an employee to quickly assign themselves an order before it gets shipped out in the shipping stage. Then we're also going to show you a multi-pick scenario. Gordon's going to show you some images of how clients of his have already taken advantage of that multi-pick. The multi-pick will allow you to pick up to 200 orders starting at the closest location, working your way down to your warehouse. Obviously, if you have a big warehouse, it just uh, minimizes the back and forth walking around, just keep, keeps you walking around in order on the warehouse. And finally, we'll be showing you the cycle count. Cycle count can help uh, scan a skew and change its properties and values, including the following, adding a bin, deleting a bin, assigning or changing a UPC, making uh, a transferring between uh, locations, 
and then also adding or uh, removing inventory based on what you're doing. So with that being said, I'm going to pass this over to Gordon, and Gordon's going to show you the integration between MOM10 and barcoders. I'm going to pass it to you right now, Gordon. All right, Sean, thank you for that. You're welcome. I've got uh, MOM10 here up on the screen. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure uh, how familiar you are, you are with that, but it's a, it's a very robust uh, feature. It, it has a lot of features uh, built into it. The, uh, as Sean mentioned, we have a lot of uh, capability that gives you the, the ability to manage your warehouse right from, right from the aisles, and it interacts with MOM real time. Uh, in order to take care of a, to take advantage of a barcoding system, obviously there's two things that should be barcoded. One is your SKUs, or your they they uh, can either have a SKU barcode on them or a UPC barcode. Many of them come with UPC, so we recommend you take advantage of that. And then uh, locations, location barcodes. It, with those two things barcoded, you can really take full advantage of our system and realize the efficiencies that Sean quoted in the opening presentation there. Our system comes with software which allows you to print both of these, by the way, the, the SKU barcode on the right or the location barcode on the left. So <clears throat> once you have your locations barcoded, you would they come out of the printer, you print them out, and then uh, this particular customer here in the Phoenix area took the, took the uh, location barcodes and put them on a magnetic strip. And the magnetic strip adheres to the front the, the shelf label, I'm sorry, the, the, the shelf, and so you have a shelf label that can be moved, it can be uh, slid to the right or left, you can expand the location or contract the location or completely remove it or add new ones as you need to without leaving any residue on the, on the lip of the shelf. Uh, you can see here that there's really two things that are to note in this. On the lower right, you can see that there's a bin full of items that have a barcode on them themselves, and many of your items may already have a UPC on them, and we recommend that you take advantage of the UPCs that are on them. Then there's other items that are just too small. For the example, these are these are fuses that are just too small to, to rebag and put a barcode on them. So they bulk them in a in a big um, bin, and then they put the barcode, the SKU barcode on the front of it, so you can still use our system to pick uh, and scan the barcode. And I'll show you that here in, in a minute. Uh, we recommend that you lay your warehouse out in a logical fashion. This is a bird's eye view of, of a warehouse. You have a, your aisle here, aisle A1. That would be the, the closest one to the receiving in the order desk. And then you have aisle B1, B2, C1, C2, etc., and so on and so forth. So the, the idea would be to pick to get an order and to be walk to walk back and forth or multiple orders and end up over here giving them to your your picking. Uh, your packing station, which would then pack it and out the door, it could be shipped. Um, once you turn down the aisle and you look at the rack, these would be your, your shelf width. Um, so this happens to be aisle D1. This is the sixth rack. So it would be your shelf racking, and then there's um, shelves within the rack and then bins on the shelf. So this happens to be aisle D1, the sixth rack, the second shelf, the third, the third bin from the left. With this nomenclature, by um, labeling your locations, you're able to hire someone, and, and they become very efficient very quickly. Within 15, 20 minutes, they can start picking orders or uh, moving items around. Uh, picking is the, is the biggest one for, for new employees. That's typically where they start. And they can be very uh, efficient very quickly. We confirm the item on picking, which I'll show you in a minute, so that if they miss pick, they're, they're right there and they're able to correct it uh, where they can have the least amount of time spent. The, uh, the model that we recommend is when you set your warehouse up, you have a lot of pickers that are out picking orders. They're feeding uh, fewer packers who are taking the orders and actually bundling them up, getting them ready to ship. And then you have a few shippers working at the shipping station that are weighing and printing out the labels and shipping them out the door. So with that three-tier level, we have corresponding programs that, that work with each level. Um, the other thing that Sean mentioned was the picking carts that some of our customers come up with. We have a program called Multi-Pick, 
which allows you to pick multiple orders at one time. And by making one trip through the warehouse, you pick and sort all of the orders at the same time. This is some of the carts that, that, that our customers have come up with. That same customer that I showed you earlier with the, the labels on the, the shelf labels came up with these carts. It's just a postal cart, and he had a metal shop create these dividers. They can pick 12 orders at one time and put in the bigger items at the top. So bin one would be here, bin two, bin three, bin four, et cetera box one, box two, et cetera, they can pick 12 orders and then they slide this over to the person who's going to pack them and they grab another cart shown here on the right and off they go to pick another 12 orders. Um, this is another one that, that one of our customers came up with. They just used some, some cheap plastic bins and put it on a bread, bread rack on wheels and they're able to pick, as you, you can see, 16 orders at one time and so on and so forth. Here's another... Uh, picking rack that one of our customers came up with. They ordered these plastic bins from Uline and were, were able to create a cart where they can pick 25 orders at one time. Um, this is a drawing of some of the carts that I've seen while I've been on site. This bottom one is a customer of ours that sells fishing equipment. They sell fishing rods and so they put in this little, um, this PVC pipe over here. They, they uh, bolted it to the side of the cart and they put the fishing rods in there. And then the boxes, they can put four on the top, four in the middle, and four on the bottom, and they can pick 12, 12 orders at, at one time. The top one is one that someone made from a garment rack from a hotel, and they took the garment rack and just welded bars and pegs across each, each row, and they're able to pick up to 50 orders at any given time. They, they had small items for cell phones and for um, M, and for M MP3 players, they had earphones, they had batteries, they had cases, they had covers, they had screen savers and all that kind of stuff. So most of their items were very small. And so they would put plastic bags hanging from these pegs and they could pick 50 orders at one time. Um, one of the things that we, we haven't figured out how to do is to get rid of the, the piece of paper because most customers, when they open the box, they want to see a packing slip to show them what's in there. And so we, we have you print out the packing slip, and that packing slip becomes the trigger point for us to scan, to scan the order number. But that's all you use it for. You scan it, you place it in the bin or the box when you pick, and then um, off you go to, to go to pick it. The other thing that we do, this is just, this is just a picture of, of uh, some of the labels that our software generates. This is where I printed out some shelf labels, um, and this is a picture of where I printed out some SKU labels right, right from mom. All right, so the other thing that we, that we do is we give all employees an employee number and a security level. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the things that happens when you, when you set up um, <clears throat> our system, it comes with a, a web page that allows you to, to uh, configure the settings in our system and also to set up your employees. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, log in here. And as you can see, I can manage my employees here. So I give my employees what's called an E number, and then I enter them in here. And here I am. You can see I put my name, first name, last name, and my security level. We have three security levels, level one, level two, and level three. Three is the highest, so I put myself at the highest level. And then we have several employees, uh, Roger Ramjet and, and Beckham Davis that are level one, and Melinda, Melinda Blake is a level two. So we can vary the, the security level within uh, our applications on what you can and can't do based on the security level when you, when you um, start the employee, when you create the employee. This is an example. I just went down to Office Max and bought a cheap badge generation program, and I was able to generate these ID badges. I bought some lanyards and some badge covers, and for you know very in inexpensive price, I was able to come put some very professional looking uh, badges together for our warehouse employees. So the, uh, the scanners that we sell, we're a, we're a dealer for DataLogic, so we sell the DataLogic product, which is shown here on the right, the, the Scorpio and the Falcon. We sell them uh, new, and we also sell, we can get our hands on some, some reconditioned ones every now and then. 
the new ones come with a one-year warranty. The reconditioned come with a 90-day warranty. On the left is a symbol Motorola, now Zebra product, called the MC3000, and we sell those reconditioned as well, and <clears throat> they come with a 90-day warranty. You'll note that all of the scanners we sell come with a full complement complementary keypad with alpha and numeric on them so you don't have to shift in and out of alpha mode or numeric mode, which gets pretty frustrating from a warehouse perspective. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we've got I've got 18 years experience in, in warehouse management. And so um, we've we've thought a lot of the stuff up front, so the stuff we supply to you has already worked through a lot of the issues that, that happen if you haven't done any warehouse management on your own before. All right, so with that said, if I, if I had a scanner in my hand, you wouldn't be able to see it. So we have a little emulator that I'm going to run that will show you what would, it would look like if you hold a scanner in your hand. So you click on our application, and you log in. This is the first level of security. All users use the same username and password. Uh, that's to avoid uh, a significant other or a family member that comes in to pick someone up for a dental appointment or, or something from picking up a scanner and playing with it and, and fooling around with your inventory. So that's the first step. Um, as Sean mentioned, the six programs that we're offering in our first offering of level one for mom 10 users is look up, pick, verify, sign, multi-tick, and cycle count. And I'll show each one of these to you in turn. Um, over here on the left is the mom application. If I want to look up a product, I would click on product and main, maintain stock. And I put the value of the name of the product in here. And I'm going to put one in called Y-Ball. And I'm going to look it up. And it searched and found the, the only one stock that matches that value. I'm going to pull it up on the screen. And within Mom10, as I said, these are, this is a very feature-rich uh, program. Down here, you can see the UPC code or the barcode that's been assigned to this. Um, if I click on inventory, you can see that there's 198 in stock. One unit is committed. It's on an order somewhere. That means that there should be a net on the shelf of 199. Um, over here on the, on the right is the, the bin, bin location. So if I look at that, there's one bin location it's in my Phoenix warehouse. And it's at location Z2 10 um, 07 11. Well, if you find that particular item, a Y ball, it's returned or you've picked too many of them or whatever reason, and you have to put it back on the shelf, normally in warehouse management, if you don't have an electronic system, you have to go to a computer, look it up, write down the location on a sticky note, and then walk back out into the warehouse. Or uh, if there's a terminal in the warehouse, all the better. With our system, you, would, you go to lookup and you just hit enter. Now, because lookup is benign, nothing can change. You can't change anything with that. It didn't request an employee ID number but I, I can still look up information. So if I type in Y-Ball, the same, the same SKU in, uh, in here, our system looks it up, and you'll notice that it has Y-Ball, Everlast, Yoga Ball, black, tr three-foot diameter, which is the two descriptions here put together. It shows the UPC, which is on that screen I showed you before, and it shows the units in stock. It shows how many are committed with a total net on, on the shelf right down here in the, in, the, in the corner. Now, there happens to be one location. It's location Z2, uh, rack 10, shelf 7, the 11th bin from the left. And there's 198 at that location. And sure enough, that shows over here in the locations within MOM 10. Now, with our system, um, <clears throat> So lookup allows you to look at the look at the information within Mom 10 without having to go back to a terminal. It's quick <coughs> and and fast, and I can scan items and it pulls it up pretty quickly. I'll scan another one here by by UPC. So you can scan either the UPC or you can scan the the SKU, and you can see that it'll pull up information very quickly. Okay, so, so that's lookup. Lookup is real helpful for customer service to put things away. Uh, it's, you, it can be used as a first step in cycle counting by someone who has a real low level. You can send them around to, to look at items and, and to count, and then if the count's off, they can tag it with a red, a red tag, 
or a red sticker, and then and then someone with more authority for the warehouse can come through and correct it using cycle count. <clears throat> so let me get out of this. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you cycle count because cycle count works hand in hand with lookup. I'm gonna go into cycle count now because I can choose I can change things. Uh, it's asking my me for my e number. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend I'm Roger Ramjet. So I scan my ID badge. And it tells me, I'm sorry, Roger, you're not authorized. So uh, a level one can't even get in to cycle count. Or Beckham Davis, if he tries to get in, he can't get in either. So he's not even, he's not able to get in. But Melinda is able to get in. So I'm gonna scan Melinda's, and now you'd see that Melinda Blake, she's logged in. And now anything, any move, ads, or change that we make in the warehouse is, is recorded by that RF server. I'll go ahead and, and flip back to that. And if I, if I show you this SKU change log right here, you can see chronologically every move, add, and change that I make in the warehouse is recorded here. So you have ability to see when people move things, when they delete things, when they add a bin, when they delete a bin, and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm going to scan that, that SKU of that, that item that we looked at, the Y ball. And we notice that there's, it, there's two locations, there's one location, a Z2, 10, 07, 11. Um, from here, I can do several things. I can change the description of it, of the location. I can change the quantity of the location. I can transfer, if there's multiple bins, I can transfer between bins. I can modify the UPC. If there's an item that doesn't have a UPC, I can add one here. Or if, if it happens to be the wrong UPC, or if I want to assign two PCs to the, two UPCs to the same SKU. And that's quite common. Let's say I'm making these, these exercise balls in Korea, and the Korean manufacturer has this UPC. And then I find that I can get them cheaper from China, so I order them from China, and it comes in. It's the same SKU as far as I'm concerned, but it comes in with a different UPC. I can assign it a second UPC, and our system will find it using either UPC, either the Korean UPC or the Chinese UPC. And it will, it will map back to the same SKU Y ball. All right, so that's, that's the UPC. I can add a bin here, I, or I can delete an empty bin. So let me go ahead and, and show you add bin. So I'm gonna type add bin. And let's say that I wanna, I wanna create a bin on the, on the A row. And so I walk up to the A row, and I walk up, and I scan the barcode there. And it says, okay, that was successful. So now if I scan it again, you see that I added a bin right from the warehouse. And now there's two bins. There's one on the back row, and there's one on the front row. So let's say that this is a seasonal item, and I want to actually move it from the back row of the warehouse where I'm not using it. Say this was a beach ball or uh, some, some uh, Christmas costumes or Halloween costumes. They may sit in the back of the warehouse most of the year, but suddenly when Halloween approaches, I want to move them to the front. So in this particular case, I'm going to move it from the Z row, which is at the back of the warehouse, to the A row. And so now that I've created a new location for it, I would, what I would actually do is now I'm going to transfer the quantity. So I'm going to type TR for transfer, and it says, what location are you transferring from? I'm going to transfer from location one. What location are you transferring to? Location two. But I'm not going to transfer all of the 198 out of there. I'm going to only transfer 25. So I'm going to put in 25. I can transfer up to 100, 198. If I try to put more in there, it won't take it. It now asks me to confirm. I'm going to take 25 from the back of the warehouse and move to the front of the warehouse. Do you want to confirm this? I type yes and hit enter. And now those have, that has been transferred. And now if I, if I scan that, you'll notice that there's two locations with part of them in the front of the warehouse and part of them in the back. If I go to the, if I go to the mom application and I go back into to Yball and I look at it, you'll see that now over here under inventory and in the warehouse, there's actually now two locations. That shows both locations. Um, so I can, I can add a bin real quickly and transfer items from one, transfer quantity from one bin to the next. I can also delete a bin. Unfortunately, you can't delete a bin unless the bin is empty. So uh, let's say now that we're all done, season's over, and now I want to transfer those back and delete delete the bin at the at the, at the front of the warehouse. 
So what I would have to do is I would have to transfer, and I would transfer from location L2 to location L1. I want to transfer all the quantity that's in there, 25, and I confirm. And now it's transferred, transferred out. So if I scan that, scan the wrong one, if I scan that item, you see that that bin is empty. Now I can delete the bin. So I take DB. Well, I have set I have set delete bin as its level three security. So even though Melinda can get in and transfer, she can't delete a bin. She can add a bin, but she can't delete a bin. And therefore, she has she has to come to the supervisor and say, Hey, I just transferred items. You'll need to get in and delete the bin. So I'm going to log out, and I'm going to scan in as is myself. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan that same uh, item, the Y ball, and I'm going to actually delete the bit. So I type DB, and it asks me what location am I deleting. I type in L2, and now the process has been successful, and the bin has been deleted. I scan that I I item again, and you'll notice that it's now gone. If I go to our uh, what we call our wireless order fulfillment system, and I click back on um, SKU change log, you see that the, what I just did is all recorded. I went ahead and using uh, add a bin, cycle count add right here, I added a bin, then I transferred from one location to the other, I transferred back, and then I did cycle count delete, and I deleted the bin. So all of the things that I just done are recorded in our uh, SKU, uh, SKU log change, change log. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm going to get out of this so you can see the power that the two have in, in common, uh, look up and cycle count. All right, let me talk, let me talk for a minute about uh, pick. Pick, is, uh, as Sean mentioned, allows you to pick a single, a single order. Um, this, is, this is very helpful uh, if you, for example, at the end of the day, if an employee says, hey, I've got five minutes left, I got eight minutes left before I have to clock out, well, what do you recommend I do? You could say, okay, well, that's enough to pick this or this order, and you can hand them the piece of paper. So I'm going to move out of this, and I'm going to get into uh, look up an order. I'm going to go to order, look up an order. I'm going to look up order 25. So I'm going to put 25 in here, and you see that the 25 has five, five different pieces, two, uh, four different SKUs all on the same item. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick order 25 so you can see how this would work. So I'll, I'll click uh, pick, and now I scan my employee badge so it knows who picked this order. And it's going to be Melinda Blake. So now I scan the order number. So I scan the order number, and what it does is it pulls in all of the items on this order and it sorts them chronologically by the location that Mom 10 tells me to pick from. So Mom 10 determines, based on certain parameters you can set within it, what are the best bins to pick from if there's multiple bins, and then it sends to us the bins that you're going to pick from, and we will chronologically, not chronologically, uh, alphabetically, alphanumerically set those in the best pick, pick order. So I'm going to go to aisle 5, bin 4. Now, this, this shows you a couple things. Let me comment on this real quick. Uh, the, location, the location information is, in this, in this case, if everything, if the first one is always aisle, then the words aisle space are kind of redundant. You don't even need them there. And similarly with bin space. So that's why we, we, we talk about the nomenclature or the, the uh, method that we use for location identification. We, it's very succinct, it's very brief, but it also gets you to aisle, to rack, to shelf, and to bin, which is very efficient. Um, <clears throat> with these scanners, the problem that we have is there's a limited amount of real estate to display information. So the more brief we can make things, the more succinct they can be, the better. The second comment I have is on your SKU. Um, it's typical for, for a company that doesn't have a, an electronic system such as this one, that have their SKU actually be a mini descriptor. It describes the item. In this case, it happens to be a football jersey, 
it's black and it's large. That makes sense. Unfortunately, it's not real efficient from a warehouse management perspective. If I have to key this in from the keypad, C dash F T dash J R, and then I don't know how many spaces there are here. There could be three, there could be four, there could be five. B K slash L, it's not very efficient. And that's okay. So best practices say that the SKU should be benign, it should be non-descriptive, it should be just a license plate. For example, a license plate on a car, it doesn't tell you what kind of car it is or the color or the make or the model. It just is a license plate, and that is a pointer in a database somewhere that points to who the owner is, the year, the make, the model, the color, and all the, all the, uh, you know, the features that might be on it. So that's what we recommend the SKU be is, and best practices says it's, it's a, descript, uh, a a non-descriptive placeholder and that it be uh, 11 characters or less. So if you go into, if you go into Walmart, Costco, uh, Home Depot, you'll notice that their product ID is always fits within that, that best practice category. Anyway, all right, so let me, let me go ahead and, and move on. So I'm going to pick this item. So I walk to aisle five, I go to bin four. Obviously, this is, this is the old nomenclature before you adopt our uh, warehouse management nomenclature. And I walk to that location and I scan the item. Now listen what happens when I scan the wrong item. It actually tells the picker, hey, you've got the wrong item. So what happens at this point, as Sean mentioned, is I can, hopefully, I go, oh, wow, oh, I've got the wrong item. I put it back on the shelf and I pull the correct item down and I scan it. So I now scan it, and now it's telling me to pick uh, the same item again. And you'll notice that this one happens to be, um, there's two of the same SKU on this order over here. Two of the same one. It's possible that they, they added it later on. Uh, but nonetheless, or there could have been insufficient quantity in one location, and it routes me to the other location to, to pick it. I, I'm not sure why it's on there, but uh, there's, a, there's a valid reason, I'm sure. So now I go to the, I, I'm at that location, so I scan it again. It confirms that it's the right one, and now it moves me to the next one. I'm on aisle five, bin six. And so now I will, I'll do the same thing. This happens to be a black one, extra large. I scan it. I scan the wrong one. Well, immediately I've now prevented a misshift order and saved you $38 on average. I scan it. And now it sends me to the next one, and so on and so forth. When I scan the last item on the order, the picker gets that little tune that plays. It says, hey, the order is com completed. It's all finished. And now they can take the, the order over to the person who's going to do the packing. Now, typically what happens is in a warehouse, you don't know what size of a, of a shipping box you're going to need until you've seen the pickers accumulated everything and got it all together. Then by looking at the accumulated items, you can say, hey, I need a 4x4x12 four by four by or a 4x12x12 four by 12 by 12 box. You can pull down the appropriate box, tape it open, and then you can move the items from the pick box or the pick cart or the pick bin into the shipping box. So we designed Verify, as I mentioned in that three-tier diagram of warehouse management, pickers, packers and shippers, we, we designed Verify to be used by the, the, the packers at the packing level. Well, how does that work? Well, they go into Verify and they would scan their employee ID badge. I'm going to scan mine. And now I scan the order number, order 25. Now what it did is it pulled all the items from that order and it says there's five pieces, there's four SKUs. I can pull them out of the box in any order, in random order, as I put them in the ship box. So if there's a better way to pack it, or if I can pack it, you know, corner to corner or center out or however you want to do it, you can pull them out as appropriate for, for packing the shipping box. I, excuse me, I scan the item as I pull it out of the box. So I scan the first item, and now it counts down. The total pieces left are four. I scan the next item. And what happens if I scan too many of an item? Let's say two items stuck together or I, I, the without... For some reason, there was still a picking error. If I scan it, it will tell me, hey, there's too many. So rather than put that in the box, I would set that to the side and then use lookup to find out where it goes to put it back on the shelf. I've just, again, I've prevented a, a, a shipment error that would uh, 
be costly to, to repair. So now I, I scan it. Now I've got two pieces left. I scan the next item and the last item. And now that I'm done, the order's now been verified as complete. And now what I would do is I would dump the peanuts in the box. Um, what was interesting is, is a couple summers ago, I ordered uh, some items from one of our customers. And that customer sent me a box, and in that box was their packing slip. And their packing slip looked like this. Here was the packing slip to me. And at the bottom of the packing slip, they had, they had um, these order numbers that, were, that you could peel off and stick to the side of the box. So what they did at this stage was they would dump in the peanuts, then they would peel off one of the stickers, stick it on the side of the box, fold this up, put it inside, seal the box, and then the box would be ready to go over to the shipping station. Essentially what the shipper would get is a pile of packages that look like this. Here would be a, a pile of packages and with the order ID number on the top. And they would then put that on the scale, Mom 10 would weigh them, print out the appropriate label, UPS, FedEx, uh, US Postal Service, whatever is appropriate, and you would put the label on top of the order number, and then it would be put in the, in the appropriate pile for the appropriate carrier. And so um, that, that's what would be done at the end of uh, verifying. All right, so now the order's been verified, and now it moves over to the shipping station. Now, we don't do the shipping. We leave that up to Mom 10. But we have sign, which is, is, the, is a, a way of signing off on the final QC package for the warehouse before it goes out the door, or allowing you to know who the person was at the shipping station when the order was shipped. So let's say the shipper is sitting at that, at that shipping station, and they hit sign. In the morning, what they would do is they would log in, and Roger Ramjet can't do it because he's a level one. Neither can Beckham Davis. So it has to be Melinda or myself. So Melinda's going to be the, the one who's shipping it out the door. She scans the order number, and then it, rec it records who the person was at the shipping station when it went out the door. It's just a simple program, but it's, it's really helpful from a customer service perspective, and I'll show, you, I'll show you how that works. Let's say that Order 25 arrives and George Bailey opens it up, and he has an issue about it, and he wants to know what's going on. So he calls customer service, and one of the things that typically happens as a warehouse is you, there's a stamp that goes on the package slip that says picked by, packaged by, and shipped by. And the, the people have to stop and initial that. Well, with our system, you don't have to do that. You, just the act of picking it, verifying it, or signing it tells us who the person was at that particular stage in the fulfillment of that order. So you go to the... Uh, you go to the wireless order fulfillment system and do order lookup. If I click on order lookup here, and I put in order number 25, and I look it up, it tells me exactly who the person was that picked it. It was picked by Melinda on April 6th. It tells me who verified it, and it tells me who signed it. It also shows me down below the exact number of items that were scanned at the time of picking and scanned at the time of verification. So if the customer calls and complains that they're short of something, you can see that they were picked and verified. Uh, you can handle that any way you want, but it's, it's a kind of a business rule on how you want to do it. But this gives your customer service department a real good tool, quick and efficient, how to look up an order, find out who it was that, that worked it, and then you can go talk to the appropriate employee if there is an issue. All right, so that's... So I've showed you uh, look up, pick, verify, sign, and cycle count. Well, how does multi-pick work? Well, multi-pick allows you to pick multiple orders at any given time. So I'm going to go into multi-pick, and I'm going to go ahead and scan myself. And I'm going to now, I found uh, five orders that only have one item on them. So, uh, and the quantity is, is a quantity of one except one. And it, it's going to be a good example for me to show you. So I'm going to scan order 12. tells me to put that in box one. So if I had if I had the rack, obviously, if I had this picking rack, what I would do is I would put the piece of paper. Now that I scanned it, I'd lay the piece of paper or the packing slip or the picking slip, whatever you want to call it. I put that in this bin, and so on and so forth. So now I'm going to scan the next one. 
It tells me to put that in box two. I scan the next one. It tells me to put that in box three, box four, box five. So now that I'm ready, now I'm ready to pick all five orders. Now you can either pick them in forward order or you can pick them in reverse order. One of our customers asked us to be them, uh, allow them to pick in reverse order. I'm not sure why, but we allowed that by typing five five. At this point, I'm gonna type seven seven and it's gonna pick the all the items on all the orders. It's gonna uh, sort them by primary pick location or that location that Mom 10 tells us to pick from. So it sends me to the first location, aisle A2, Rack three, shelf five, uh, the the first bin. I walk to that location and I scan the item. It, it confirms the right one and it tells me what box to put it in. And now it sends me to, to the to the B aisle. It's gonna it has me go there, and I'm gonna order the uh, the blue warm up suit. It tells me to put that in box four. I go to the next one. It tells me to put that in box three. So I think you get the idea. It's telling me to pick and sort at the same time. So it tells me to put that in box four. The Y set tells me to put that in box two. Now you notice this last item is Y ball. These, those uh, yoga balls that we've been using as an example. And that wants me to pick a hundred of those. Do I sit there and scan a hundred of them all at the same time? No. What I do is I, I, our best practice recommendation is you scan the first one to make sure that you're at the right place and you're picking from the right bin. I scan the first one and you notice now it tells me to put that in box five and it decrements the quantity from 100 to 99. What I do now is I type VB for bulk buy and I hit enter and it tells me, okay, pick a total of 100 of those and then hit enter to continue. And now when I hit enter, tells me to put those in box five, and I'm done with the order. It plays a little complete routine uh, tune. And so I'm all finished, and all, all the orders have been uh, picked, and they're sorted and in the bin ready to go over to the packer. Now, I mentioned earlier that we track employee productivity. Well, if I, if I go here and I hit uh, pick report, you'll notice that now there's actually a report on who picked what. Well, Melinda picked one order. There were five SKUs, five items. Here's how long it took her. And then Gordon picked um, five orders, and here's, here's what I picked. And so it, it normalizes that by, by showing you the average time per order and the average time per SKU and the average time per item. You can also, if you have some employees that work 40 hours and other employees that work 20 hours, you can normalize it by typing add hour, uh, clicking add hours, and then what it does is it adds an hour column in here, and I can put the hours that they worked, and then it will normalize their their work based on the hours they work, so you can compare apples to apples. What our customers do is they use this to manage the warehouse and their employees' productivity. So they'll run this report, say, on a Friday afternoon after the warehouse is shut down, and they'll give a gift certificate to the employee that has the best time with the least amount of errors, and hopefully, you know, with our system, errors are reduced to, to, to way under 1%. So it would be the one that has the, the best time. So that's how the, the pick report works. The verify report shows who verified the order. So if you have multiple, multiple people packing, you can compare packer productivity to packer productivity. And then you can have um, the sign. It can show you who, who signed what orders, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, of course, I showed you the, the SKU change log, which allows you, allows you to see um, all the things that occurred. Now, one I want you to note, when I used BB on the scanner to jump over picking all 100 of those, that's a shortcut. And it might, not, it might be a, a business rule that you want them to use that. It might be a business rule that they never use that. So we, we added this to the uh, SKU location and change log so that you could see which employees are using BB as they pick orders. And it was on order number uh, eight, and the quantity that they BB'd on was 99. So if they're using this a lot, trying to abuse the system, for example, you can, you can actually catch that here and see what, what's going on. All right, so, 
So now we've, we've walked through the uh, lookup, the pick, the verify, the sign, the cycle count. Um, and I wanted to also note, Sean mentioned that we help you print the barcodes. We have three up here on the left, we have three programs that come loaded on the desktop of the RF server. One is called Barcode Maker, barcode maker File. It allows you to create uh, barcodes in an Excel spreadsheet for your shelf labels. And then you can export them to a TXT file. And then as you print them, it will print them out into a uh, one, one line on, on the, the spreadsheet will equate to one label. So in this case, this is where I printed out a whole bunch of shelf labels uh, using that process. Then we also have barcode labeler, which allows you to create a single label at a time. If, for example, something is damaged when it comes in, then um, you can use barcode labeler to re repair that or replace it. And port print is the program where when you click it, it comes up like this, and you can type in a SKU, like Y-ball, and then the quantity, let's say I want to print 20 of them. I, I hit 20 here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not print that many. I'm going to just end that. But when you hit, put them in and hit enter, it retrieves the data from MOM10, and then it'll print out a SKU label. This is one I did earlier for that example we've been using, Y-ball, and I printed two barcodes, two SKU barcodes that will go on there. You see that there's a brief description, the, the SKU, the UPC that is assigned to it, and its, and its location, uh, its, its primary location that's pulled from the, the mom bin location. So with that, I'll shift it back to Sean. Thanks, Gordon. So as you saw, that is the integration between us, mom, and barcoders. At this time, if there are any questions, we will take those questions now. And we did have a question in Gordon, if you did want to answer it, in regards to the reports um, that you were showing, especially the SKU change report, is there a way to export that out and print it, or is it just printing from the browser? Um, it's very easy to take this and, and uh, have a, a button here that clicks and, and puts it out to a CSV file. We could do that very easily. We've done that on, on our other reports. Uh, it's just not here now. Uh, okay. I want to caution you that, that this, this gets a very, very big. As you, you know, like two years after, after using this, you'll have a ton of information in here. So you want to you narrow it down by doing your search filter criteria, and then you could click export to CSV file, and it would, it would export, and then you could either run it through Excel or print it out. All right, thanks Gordon for that. If there are any more questions, feel free to ask. If you come up with any questions about either the MOM software itself or the barcoder solution that we showed today, you can email us directly or email me directly at shawn.taggart at freestylesolutions.com. I'll be happy to get that question answered for you. Make sure, if you already haven't already, you download the two uh, sheets that we have available for you. One's based on the barcoder solution itself, a nice brochure that Gordon and his team put together, and then also the mom solution sheet. Um, with that being said, I'm going to give you a few minutes back of your day. Um, thank you guys for taking the time out and learning about the two solutions together. Hope to hear from you all soon. Bye.